Hi there, I'm Lucas from Bardscraft. I'm gonna challenge myself by building a huge miniature, a titan clad in plate mail. I will build whatever pops up there. Right now I have no clue what I'm gonna do. All I know is that I will be using foam and cardstock. So I guess I'll just start crafting. Wish me luck. I get my kitchen knife and phone. Okay, I'm using XPS foam. I cut out a piece that is suitably thick for the legs. I measured the upper and lower legs as 4 cm each, then traced out simple shapes for the legs. As I cut out the pieces, I knew that they won't have to be that pretty. After all, they will be covered with plate armor later. When working with foam, use drawing cuts to get smoother surfaces. The knife I'm using is dull. The drawing motion is doing all of the work. So think of that while cutting XPS foam. Before I started gluing the pieces together, I roughly rounded them by cutting away material from the edges. You can also shape them a bit by pressing down the foam with your fingers. Alright, I came to the conclusion that this doesn't look that bad. My level of cluelessness has dropped a bit, yay! I made a simple placeholder foot, loaded up the glue gun and figured out that it will be easier to assemble the titan on a temporary cardboard base. Look, I used my body as reference for the posture of this build. This might actually work, I thought to myself. I then proceeded by gluing on the leg pieces and hoped for the best. Later, you can add more glue to the joints to make it stronger. Here, I quickly changed the position of the left leg. Yeah, now I was able to visualize how to do the torso. I cut a slightly thicker piece of foam and trace out a torso shape that fits between the legs. Here it is, roughly cut out and my fingers are dirty. With an image of the torso in mind, I started shaping it with a utility knife. Meh, the kitchen knife is more fun, and the grip is more comfortable. Here you can see, it's not sharp. I'll make a cutting and sharpening tutorial at some point. That fits, boom, some adjustments. Then I was able to shape the torso with my dirty fingers. Plenty of hot glue should do the trick. I made sure he stood up straight, then added more glue just for good measure. The glue also adds some weight to the model. Okay, he's gonna be a bit big. Here we have a dwarf miniature for scale. And a goofy dragon. <laughs> the arms, bit shorter than the legs. I compared the length of my limbs to get good measurements for my tiny foam pieces. The arm pieces are a bit thinner, maybe too thin. Well, we can add more armor to make them appear thicker and stronger. As before, I rounded them up slightly. Then thought for a while. Hmm, the upper arms should be a bit longer. Just to clarify, the upper and lower legs are 4 cm each. The upper arm is 3.5 cm and the lower arm is 3 cm long. And the torso is about 7. Just some handy references for the crafty ones. Alright, I grabbed my glue gun and attached the arms. This is my first attempt, the idea was as demonstrated here. I thought about how the pose would look with the spear held towards the ground. But that's not good enough for us. I looked at the familiar Dark Souls boss, Dragon Slayer Ornstein. This pose is much better. I removed and reattached the arm pieces and played with my sword to get an idea of how to position the arm. The other arm is easier. I made sure that he stands with his shoulders back. This miniature will never experience back pain. This figure is pretty good. With all the limbs in place, it is time to add more glue. This is how to create stronger joints. Moving on, I will quickly make the head. I just need something to hold the helmet we will make later. So a somewhat round ball will work just fine. The head will rest on this disc, we'll call it the neck. With a few dabs of hot glue, the head is in place. Awesome! Now we can move to the fun parts. 
I'll make the larger parts of the armor from good old cardstock. Oat packages as usual. My approach for making the armor plates was the following. I started by drawing a shape that I thought would fit well, just by eyeballing the measurements. I then cut out the piece, and yeah, this is the breastplate. I bent it into shape and tried it on. Now I can easily see what needs to be changed. I used the piece as reference for making a new and better breastplate. These longer parts I just drew will go over the shoulders, and in this way the breastplate will be easier to connect to the armor on the back. Bending the cardstock with your fingers is simple, as shown here. I thought this piece will fit nicely here. Okay, I got it in place. This looks good for me. While waiting for the glue gun to heat up, I made the larger armor piece for the back, using that as a template to draw this, the second version of the back plate. The small V-shaped cut here will make it easier to bend the piece over the back. Alright, now we can start attaching the plates with the glue gun, with plenty of hot glue on the chest. I put on the breastplate. I made sure to push down the piece as well, and shaped it a bit before the glue cooled down. These flaps on the back and the shoulders will be covered with another layer shortly, so their purpose is just to hold the breastplate in place. Gluing on the parts like this works best if you just ignore the pain of the hot glue. It only hurts a bit, I promise. And the back piece goes over here. The flaps go around to the front. I was also able to remove some of the messy glue. I'll clean things up as we move along. The leg armor was simpler and more fun to do. Trying it on, and with a bit of glue and bending, the upper leg was covered in armor. I made sure the edges are glued on as well. This piece doesn't make that much sense, but it looks good. This guy will probably not be able to walk. Here I'm figuring out what to do with the remainder of the leg. This is a bit too small. I added the pointy thing to make this look edgier. You'll see. Here I also got the idea for the surcoat, or battle skirt. That's what I call it. But back to the leg. Some adjustments and it's ready to be glued on. Alright, I still need to cover this. But first I'll move on to the arms. The armor of the arms and pauldrons are made from several stacked plates. We'll need a large pauldron here. This is how it's made. I made some adjustments for this piece, so it fits better around the edges of the breastplate. The rest of the pieces were just rectangular in shape. More glue and I tried on the first layer of pauldron. After adjustments I glued it on. Here you can see how I removed the occasional gluey mess. Before finishing the pauldrons, I covered the rest of the arms. If you do this, remember to use pressure while gluing. In this way the cardstock parts get a better shape. Ah. It's a bit too long, I'll just cut away some. And the final piece, covering the joint here. Now I took a short rest and then returned to the pauldrons. I decided to design a few smart pieces that go well together and cover all the exposed areas. That went well. Time to increase the armor class with more plate layers. First, the torso and the legs. Whoever attempts to craft something similar, just know, 
that if you get this far, the rest of the build is much more enjoyable to do, as you start seeing the beauty of your work, hopefully. Adding on more details will just amplify the good creative feelings. That's how I felt at this part. No more than these strips on the side, between the plates, and we'll move on to the epic battle skirt. I'll make an exceptionally unrealistic surcoat, and then I will add on more little details. I tried making a few different cutouts, and ended up with something like this. It should fit better if I cut it here. Two more pieces. There they are, so you get an idea if you want to build this. We'll need lots of cardstock to make the battle skirt parts for the other side. Throughout this project, I kept my workspace pretty clean. That is really important. With all the flappy parts done, I'm ready to piece together the battle skirt. I applied hot glue on the upper inner edges of the pieces and attached them as well as I could. Alright, let's see. This needs to be covered. Let's turn it around and see on the other side. I'll put something in the front as well. It's all coming together. This piece will be placed in front of sensitive areas with a belt to go along. Before attaching the belt, I'll put this part on the back. I almost forgot this. This smaller part will go over the belt, so I'll attach it later. With the dangly thingy in place, I attached the belt. I applied more glue as I moved around the waist. Here comes the piece I mentioned earlier. Yep, I'm quite happy with this. Some kind of a belt buckle would be nice, I thought. For smaller pieces like this, I used PVA glue as it is less of a mess. I like the flaps the most. Flaps are great. The boots, they need to be larger. I messed around with hot glue and then added these small bits in an attempt to create armored plate boots. I didn't pay too much attention here. They don't need to be perfect. Half of this will be covered by the battle skirt when observing from an angle that would make sense at the gaming table. Just a few more bits and some hot glue magic. These are exceptionally okay looking. Moving on to the gauntlets. At this point I was thinking exactly what you are thinking. How the flock will this work? I'll show you, these vaguely hand-shaped cardstock bits will work well. They can even hold the great spear. I simply glued them on first, under the plate of the arm. Then I cut out these tiny rectangles, about the width of a finger. Carefully, I glued on these tiny little bits on the fingers, all the way up to the back of the hand. There, I glued on a strangely shaped plate that would probably make the hand unable to move. But uh, we don't care. I was hopeful. A few more bits there, and it looks far better than I expected. On to the helmet we move. I tried on a really simple cutout, then used that to create this slightly better version. Let's see. It still needs a bit of work here. On the face, I cut out sort of like a visor, as shown here. I glued a smaller piece under the hole, so it can be painted later. I cut away the extra material, there, then put it on using plenty of hot glue. The seam was a bit tricky, got some extra glue here that I removed. Alright, this guy is gonna be a bit thick-headed. My plan for the top of the helmet was the following. Fill the head with glue completely and cover the edges. Put on a top and slightly shape it so it's not flat. Then cut away the extra cardstock. That's how I did the helmet. Now that the most troublesome parts are done, I'll quickly make some details. But I won't show everything because that would make this video a bit too long. These pretty pieces will outline the edges of the battle skirt. In this way, I got more detail to the flat looking cardstock pieces. I used a similar approach for the rest of the armor. After a while, I had made all of these details. 
just some good looking bits on the shoulders, hands and a bit everywhere. Now comes the part I've been waiting for, making the great spear. It's gonna be long, so the base will also have to be high, as you can see here. The shaft of the spear will be made out of barbecue sticks. I just need to find the straightest one. Good. I began by cutting away the pointy bit. I'll make the point a bit pointier, that's the point. Cutting this would be easier with a sharp knife or a tiny saw. Using the same plastic as for the frost terrain, I tried a few shapes for the spearhead and ended up with something like this. I designed the shape on the cardstock first, then drew the shape of the spearhead on the plastic. The plastic is pretty thick, so cutting it required some force and patience. There we go, I'm using the grid to check if it's symmetrical enough. Then took my future spear shaft and dangerously split it like this. Now I can glue the spearhead in place. I used lots of glue and endured the hot pain to create a strong bond. Using straight lines as guidance, I created details for the large spearhead. I will glue these thinner pieces onto the spearhead. Later I glue this on with hot glue instead. Works better. A bit more glue here and then I'll add more parts to the spear as I shut up for a while. Alright, this is almost good enough. I found some old fishing line, my grandfather's, probably ancient. I will use the thread to make amazing details for the spear. First I glued it on here and winded it around a few times. Then applied glue to the thread, so we don't have to mess up the fine shaft. As shown here, I wound it around the spear shaft. I did my best to keep an even spacing between the coils along the entire spear. Using a knot was a much easier way to begin. I worked my way around the middle of the cross. When that was done, I fully covered the rest of the spear with the thread. With a bit of glue, the end of the thread will stay down nicely. I'll glue on the spear later. This looks truly promising. A small test, and we'll move on to the painting. I thought that a black undercoat works best for the metal armor, so I started covering everything with a regular black acrylic paint. Oh man, I wish I had a black spray. Using some even more crude painting skills in the image manipulator, I planned most of the paint job. Many of the smaller detail pieces will be painted as dark gold. For variation, a few brighter steel parts and a bit of dark red should go well with the surcoat. And of course, the blue visor. Now I can proceed with moderate confidence. This really took a while with the brush. I proceeded by dry brushing with gunmetal once the black had dried. Here you can see that I was a bit messy with the hot glue. There are some glue bits that look bad. Fortunately, we don't usually look at miniatures under 5000 lumen work lights while playing. With the dry brush done, I colored some parts with the same paint. Just a few plates on the arms, shoulder and some little parts. For dark gold, I mixed gold paint with black and started painting many of the smaller details. Then, with a mixture of black and red, I started painting the surcoat. With some wash later, this might even look good. Then I found some smaller areas where the dark red fits nicely. 
and decided to paint the belt with dark blue. I will be using blue for the spear as well, but first it was completely painted in black. I should build a life-sized version, ha. Huh. Using the gunmetal from earlier, I dry brushed the blade and the long spear shaft. Then dry brushed the thread here with dark gold. Some blue on the middle of the spear head adds nice variation and complements the gold and red. I dry brushed again with gunmetal. This is looking really good. Alright, when in doubt, add more wash. I used Army Painter's Dark Tone Wash to cover the red parts. Immediately, everything started looking much better. Then I also covered the spear. And yeah, covered every single spot on the miniature. Even the armor gets better. I returned with the gunmetal dry brush after applying the wash. The gauntlets looked way much better after this dry brush. Really good, I thought. Then, with shaky hands after the night shift, I carefully, <laughs> not carefully, attempted to paint the edges of certain parts. I'm sure you could do a much better job. Nevertheless, this added to the look. Okay, painting the visor. I'm lacking a true white mini paint, but I did my okayest to paint a dark blue to white transition. Then, I darkened the surrounding of the visor with black. Before equipping the great spear, I dry brushed it with bright gold. Yeah, this is gonna be good, I thought. Let's do it. With a dab of hot glue, the mighty weapon is now in the titan's grasp. That's good. Now I'm gonna spray some fixative in my lungs. Of course, with the window open. There we have it, the Armored Titan build, armed and fully covered in plate, ready to become the final raid boss of a great quest. I'll touch up the paint job and then make a gargantuan sized base later. Alright, I had fun building this titan, subscribe and I'll see you next week. But until then, check out these videos for more terrain and miniatures. Good luck!